Hey, it's your girl Miko. I'm a food blogger over at Miko and the Dish, and today, Tasty has challenged me to use every item in my fridge to make a charcuterie board. So I'm about to empty out this fridge behind me and we are about to make the ultimate charcuterie board. Follow along and watch me as I make this board. All right, so I have my waffle iron already preheated. I sprayed it a little bit with some cooking oil and all I have to do is take my biscuit and put it right on the grate. I'm gonna close it and let it cook for three to four minutes. They look beautiful, they're golden brown. Add my butter here. I also have some fresh fruit that I found in the fridge. So I'm gonna add some strawberries, some blueberries, and I've got some really juicy blackberries. We're gonna make a very delicious light and airy fruit dip. So I already have cream cheese in a bowl. I'm going to basically mix this into it's really light and fluffy. Now it looks perfect. I'm going to start to add in my remaining ingredients, powdered sugar. I'm gonna add just a little bit of vanilla. Now that all the ingredients are in, I'm going to start to whip this until everything is nice and smooth. So I'm gonna add this to the bowl. That'll be good for the charcuterie board. I'm gonna put that right here for now. And so that we can make DIY parfaits, I grabbed a little bit of granola that I had in the pantry. So I also had in my fridge some Greek yogurt that's perfect to go with our breakfast charcuterie board. And it also fits really well with the sweet side of our board. And the way I'm thinking about setting this up is I really wanna make sure that the colors or the light colors are separated so that your eye moves throughout the board. It's looking good so far. We're going to continue to build up the sweet side and then we'll eventually get to the savory side. I was able to round up some mashed potatoes from last night's dinner and Tasty happens to have a really delicious looking donut recipe made for mashed potatoes. Let's jump right into the recipe. I'm going to add to my flour some baking powder, baking soda, salt, and nutmeg. Add in all of my ingredients coming through nice and evenly. Now let's jump into our wet ingredients. I have some room temperature butter here that I'm going to actually cream until it's nice and smooth. We're gonna continue the creaming by adding in some granulated sugar, brown sugar, and those leftover mashed potatoes I was telling you about. Let's get to creaming. All right, that looks good. So I have some eggs I'm gonna to add to the mix and some vanilla. All right, so this batter is coming together really nicely. Next, what I'm gonna do is those dry ingredients that we first sifted. I'm gonna add half of that into the batter. So there we go. I'm gonna mix this in all together. Now I'm gonna add my buttermilk. That looks good. And now I'm gonna add in the rest of my dry ingredients. And now I'm going to use a spatula actually to fold in the remaining dry ingredients. All right, our dough is looking good. Get a little bit of flour. Now, flour is really important because it's going to keep the dough from sticking to your surface. It's going to keep the dough from sticking to your hand. You're going to probably add anywhere from two tablespoons to a quarter cup of flour as you're kneading. All right, our dough looks good. It's come together really nicely. Now I'm going to take a rolling pin and we're basically gonna roll this out to about a half an inch. Now we're going to cut our dough. I have a three inch cutter that I'm going to use. So we're gonna just press that straight down and lift up. I'm gonna do that all around the entire dough. Now I can just lift up my scraps from around my donut. Now I'm going to take a smaller one inch cutter and then I'm going to basically do the same thing in the very center of each of these donut circles. All right, so our oil is ready. We had to wait for it to get to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. We basically want these to be in there for two minutes on each side. And you can see they're a beautiful, beautiful golden brown. All right, the donuts look really good. I'm gonna go ahead and take these out and I'm going to add them to a wire rack. And we're gonna make a quick cinnamon sugar just by adding a little cinnamon to some sugar. I'll stir that up to make sure everything's equally incorporated. I take my donut and basically dump it right inside, give it a little bit of shake. And now we have a delicious cinnamon sugar topping for our donut. So we just wrapped up making these delicious mashed potato donuts using our leftover mashed potatoes. 
To complete our sweet side of the board, I have some peanut butter that I pulled out of the fridge. And I'm gonna place this right here. And I have some leftover peach chutney. I actually made a peach cobbler and had a bunch of peaches left. The sweet side is looking nice and decked out, but I still have a ton of items that I need to figure out. So let's make a vegan maple sausage. That is actually what we're going to use today. So I have a little maple syrup. Got our black pepper, sage, thyme, garlic powder, and our salt. I'm gonna throw on some gloves to help me mix this all together. Get right in there. And basically what I wanna do now is I wanna divide this into eight equal parts in order to make some pan patty. So I'm going to basically just do a nice soft press into a little bitty sausage patty, just like that. And then add my sausage patty right inside. So then go ahead and flip these over. We'll give these another two to three minutes and then they're ready to go onto our board. In order to help with not staining the board is add a little bit of paper down first. That also is going to provide some color and some fun texture that is very interesting to the eye. I love to have a random cheese inside of my fridge so we'll add some of those cheeses here as well. So let's go ahead and get right into the candied beef bacon recipe. I went ahead and created a single layer of all of the beef bacon. I'm gonna pop that into the oven. So my complete house smells like bacon. I can tell that it's ready to pull out. We're gonna get this pepper jelly that I found in the fridge. It's gonna be really good in order to add not only some sweetness, but also some spiciness. It's nice and lacquered up with this jelly. And so what I'm going to do is throw this back into the oven for another three to five minutes. So our candied bacon turned out phenomenal. You can see it's glistening and all lacquered up with that pepper jelly. I am super impressed already at what we've been able to do. So I had some deli meat. This traditionally goes into a charcuterie board and I'll add those throughout the board as well. I am truly working through all of the items in my fridge. The last leftover I have is a steak from last night's dinner with hubby. All I'm gonna do is add my steak to a wire rack on top of a baking sheet. I have my oven preheated to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I actually had some leftover coffee butter. I know that sounds odd. Coffee and steak goes great together. So I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of that to my skillet. I'm gonna let that heat up. And then I'm also gonna to continue to add my steak into the skillet. And then we're gonna let that cook into the coffee butter. Give it a little jiggle just to make sure we're getting all that coffee butter from the bottom. Add it to our wire rack. And we don't want this coffee butter to go to waste, so we're just gonna add what little bit is left over the top. I'm so excited to add this to my charcuterie board. Boom. And we have coffee butter steak. We've got some spaces to fill in. I actually happen to have some leftover boiled eggs. We have some deli meats that we already added from the fridge. So in the pantry, I went ahead and grabbed a couple crackers. This is truly the ultimate board. Look at this. I'm actually quite impressed at how well we did. All right, if I'm being completely honest, this is what I've been waiting for. That is incredibly moist on the inside. Don't even imagine that you're tasting mashed potato cheese. This tastes like a traditional cake donut. Where do I go next? How about bacon? Mmm. Let me tell you something. This bacon is nice. It's crispy. And that pepper jelly is so good. It provides that heat and that sweet is exactly what I need. I am in heaven, this is so good. First of all, I wanna thank you guys for sticking with me for this whole gargantuan board. If you wanna see me make more charcuterie boards here on Tasty, leave a comment below, let me know. I'm Miko, and until next time, peace. Oh yes.